Viltrumites from the Invincible comics, Kryptonians from DC Comics, and finally, Saiyans from the Dragon Ball manga and anime. Now, if three species, these three races, were to go to war, who do I think would win? We will be comparing the average warriors of each, basically the non-main characters, to decide who is superior. But before we get into this, smash the like button. Let's try to run for 500 likes. I feel like this video will be really popular. So I'm super excited to see you guys' comments on this as well. And if you have not subscribed, do so. I put out consistent content, whether on my community tab or videos daily. So make sure to subscribe. Goon Nation, we're on the road to 30k. Definitely love all the support I'm getting. But without further ado, let's get into this breakdown. And I'm super excited to talk about this. Let's go. The first species for us to break down are the Saiyans from Dragon Ball, a proud warrior race that was once enslaved by the likes of Frieza and nearly wiped out. Let's go over the pros and then the cons of being a Saiyan. First pro. In terms of attack potency and their potential and power, even the weakest are planet to starbusters, with toddlers literally being stated to be able to take over entire planets if they want to. Warriors are trained since birth to subjugate and destroy. However, the culture has been so refined for them that they have a natural instinct and ability to do so without the training. For example, it stated if Goku had not hit his head, he would have done so with, uh, he would have taken over within a few years of his life. They are considered the apex race in Dragon Ball, and while some can be stated to be stronger or have better feats, you still have to put the Saiyans in some of the top races in Dragon Ball who can threaten entire dimensions, timelines, all of that. They have incredible powers and power manipulation, including energy manipulation and projection. They have power mani manipulation, stat manipulation, and power concealment, essentially being able to hide how strong they truly are if need be. They have high-grade battle armor and ships capable of taking them across the galaxy to take over different planets. They have MFTL travel gear and capabilities. So like I said, it's pretty easy for them to start a campaign of intergalactic dominance. In terms of their own personal speed, they are FTL to MFTL on average, being able to react in these said ships, keep up with them if they need to. It's just easier for them to use tech to travel. Um, in terms of stats, they have incredible stats amps. Uh, this includes power-ups through rage, power-ups that we're going to talk about from reactive adaptation, but regardless, being able to amp themselves, including reaching an incredible form called Super Saiyan, their peak if they were to unlock it with enough time they have insane uh, abilities to make themselves stronger mid-battle saiyans also obtain a stronger ape form uh, with the presence of a full moon however if you remove their tail this form will be dispatched of they have flight and if you don't consider it flight you could call it extreme levitation as well as insane athleticism, bounce, reaction, like I said, easily MFTL uh, in combat. They are constantly getting stronger and adapt to damage and evolve from it, which is referred to as a Zenkai boost. Now let's talk about some of the cons of this race. They're not particularly considered smart in their universe, but I do want to address this that they're not as dumb as people make them out to be. It's just... They can essentially be driven by ego, which makes them look incredibly dumb. Most rely on their superiority and stats, and as a result, a pretty solid strategy can take them out in combat, especially if they view you as weaker than them. Nothing too crazy uh, is in their tech department relative to other races they'll be compared to. They do create some pretty cool ships that give them capability of travel to an insane degree. However, nothing else really exists. Uh, they can be caught off guard and their stats will be way lower when caught off guard, which kind of sucks as a weakness, especially if you're prone to rushing in and just trying to beat the shit out of something. You could get caught slipping pretty easily. But regardless, the Saiyans are one of the most feared races in the Dragon Ball universe for a reason. They have insane potential and the strongest of them are even sought out by gods themselves for proper combat. But that is it with the sand let's move on to the next one next up is the race of warriors from the invincible universe the viltrumites 
What are the pros? What are the cons of this species? First, let's start with the pros. The average Viltrumite warrior are among the most feared in existence and can help subjugate entire worlds. And if the worlds do not abide by their commands, their entire species will be white. The average Viltrumite warrior is expected to be MFTL and can traverse solar systems, holding their breath in order to travel from star and planet in one trip. They are genetically coded for war and peak violence due to inner genocide that occurred in order to purge their race of weakness. Over time, they lost about half of their race, but the rest were insanely powerful warriors adapted to battle perfectly. A Viltrumite is expected to take down a world, whether through power, intelligence, or anything else in between, including outright just wiping the population. Healing factor and smart items allow them to adapt, especially if they survive an incredible uh, encounter or battle. That's why their race was able to adapt over time so efficiently. A Viltrumite can live for thousands of years. However, this doesn't get exploited as much due to their many exploits and wars and the virus that ravaged them. We, we don't get to see them live often that long, but their potential time length and time period of life is in the thousands of years. A literal military and tactic based species. That is all the Viltrum Empire stands for, and that is all they are bred for, and that's what they use to spread throughout the galaxy. They can adapt and grow beyond the damage they survive, becoming even more powerful the more and more they have trying encounters. With that out the way, what are the cons? Well, they got folded by a virus. And when I say folded, I mean 99.9% .9 died to it. So their weakness to stuff like biochemical warfare is very apparent. Besides that, Viltrumites don't really have weaknesses. They bring a lot to the table. They're capable of what they're capable of, and they do it very well. Hence why they're so feared in their universe. But we've got them out the way. Let's move on to the next one. Last is the Kryptonians from the DC universe. This is a proud race that was eventually doomed and cast off one of their last survivors, the eventual GOAT among superheroes, Superman himself. What are the pros and cons of this race? Let's go over the pros first. They are one of the most advanced tech societies in the DC universe, having some of the best technological crafts and inventions among anyone in the multiverse, uh, which includes a universe that has people that create time travel methods, methods going beyond time, space, and dimensions itself, a whole bunch of craziness, and they are among the most revered in the tech department. They have MFTL to even immeasurable ships and combat warfare vessels, which makes them incredibly dangerous if they do go to war. They have insane scientific means, including creating beings like Doomsday himself, which can ravage entire universes and even hell itself, if left unintended. They have insane physical stats. A group of Kryptonians took down Doomsday and fought off Bizarro. They also invaded DC Earth, and Kryptonian power can be enough to overcome even Green Lanterns themselves in combat. Their flight and MFTL speed can also reach immeasurable with some of the higher end ones, given they can fight Green Lantern Corps members, they can fight beings who have shown examples of immeasurable speed like the Flash. Kryptonians actually are very powerful and fast as well, uh, especially when exposed to a yellow sun. They have amps in the sun and or when they are near a sun, including healing and getting it's significantly stronger in a short amount of time around it and it amps all of their stats and abilities as well they have laser vision potent enough to beat back doomsday and help subjugate the rest of earth when they attack dc um, they also have freeze breath as well which is made famous by the most famous other race superman however it is important to note they don't scale to superman superman is a descendant of the god of superheroes okay it's just levels to this that's why we said we're doing average you know, they also have a healing factor, able to survive near-death injuries and come back from it, especially if exposed to the sun. They also have techs and weapons that can help subjugate planets and stars and fend off 
said threats that can threaten their planet when they need to. What are the cons of this race? They have no special immunity or resistance to magic, and they're pretty famous for that aspect. They have weaknesses to kryptonite as well. It can cripple them and put them in a near-death state, as well as they have a weakness to the exposure of red sun radiation. With that out the way, let's get into the verdict. Now, if these three species were to square off with their average members going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, if these societies were battling to dominate a universe, we we're just comparing overall on average who I think are superior. Let's get into my decision on that. So coming in last place or third on my list is Viltrumites. Now, while they didn't have many cons, so to speak, that doesn't mean their pros are enough to put them above spe other species. For example, if they went against the Saiyans, I believe the problem they would face is that the Saiyans on average are much stronger than the Viltrumites. They would be constantly throwing moon to star level attacks at the planet of the Viltrumites, constantly putting whatever terrestrial body they are on at stakes, as Saiyans don't really give a shit <laughs> about that planet in particular. They would simply be willing to get rid of it. A Viltrumite, when full grown, is expected to help subjugate a planet, but there's no real proof that they can actually just bust planets or they rarely have anything that shows they can scale to that level, whereas as a toddler, you could literally, as a pure blood Saiyan, threaten to destroy a planet, and they casually fight off moon busters and can even make moon with their refined key. I think Saiyans would take down Viltrumites pretty fast. The Viltrumites are smarter, they do have better acts technically overall but we also got to consider the reactive adaptation of saiyans the natural combative adaptation the fact they're going to be getting stronger constantly throughout the fight that spells doom for the viltrumites and i don't see them comparing at all to the kryptonians when just a random band of kryptonian average soldiers took down doomsday they can do that <laughs> viltrumites are absolutely fucked so viltrumites for me Despite their dominance as a species within their own universe, I would have them at third place here. Second place would be the Saiyans. The Saiyans are a proud warrior race who naturally bred over time to a point that even simple born um, Saiyans are capable of destroying planets. Now, they are incredibly powerful. With, with an example of how insane their potential is, we gotta reference humans like Frillin is a human in the um, Dragon Ball universe that can combat characters in Super that are easily, even if we lowball them shamelessly, can scale to multi-galaxy and universal and up. So with that scaling and the fact that human potential is vastly inferior to Saiyan potential, the Saiyan has the potential by all means to be incredibly powerful. But in my opinion, it's not enough to take down Kryptonians. For one, Kryptonians are significantly smarter than Saiyans. I think Saiyans are a lot smarter than given credit for. However, in comparison to a race that can create monsters like Doomsday, they're just vastly superior. Their tech is much faster. Their weapons are faster than the Saiyans. They themselves are in superior to Saiyans, in my opinion, by too large of a degree at the start of the fight for Saiyans to potentially adapt. I think the Kryptonians are too naturally gifted, too naturally physically superior, and have too much technology and superior uh, catalog of tech compared to the Saiyans that if they were to go to war, it wouldn't really be close. I have Kryptonians taking it overall above the other two as evidenced by who I just listed at three and two. And like I said, it's just because stats wise they are way above the other two as well as their tech is superior and they faced greater threats than the other two quite frankly however neither of these species should be shit on in any way you guys need to love them all you should also love this video so make sure to smash the like button i had so much fun doing this video and if you want to see content like this you can actually sponsor it yourself as someone sponsored this video. So shout out to my guy for doing that. And yeah, anyways, it's been your boy Jobbers and Goons. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.